It just seemed like a couple of years ago I could purchase a car battery for under $100. But for this video, every one except for one of the car batteries we're testing cost over $100 and one of them cost over $200. When did car batteries get so expensive? And if you're gonna pay that much money for a car battery, you wanna make sure it's gonna last. So let's get the testing underway and see which one of these car batteries is the best. In the first test, we're gonna see which brand produces the most cranking amps at 75 degrees Fahrenheit. We're also gonna place a load on these batteries to see how they compare. We're also gonna compare absorbed glass mat batteries with flooded lead acid batteries to see if one type of battery charges faster than the other. We'll place these batteries in a freezer for 24 hours and then measure the cold cranking amps. Before we jump into the testing, we'll compare a total of six batteries. Four are flooded lead acid batteries, which are the most common type of battery, and two of them are absorbed glass mat batteries. I'll explain more about each type of battery as well as the pros and cons of each type of battery later in the video. I purchased all these batteries on the same day, but all of them need to be topped off to be fully charged. I'm going to go ahead and charge all these batteries using a 750 milliamp trickle charger that's safe to use on both flooded lead acid as well as absorbed glass mat batteries. All the batteries are now fully charged and have been disconnected from the trickle charger for several hours, so let's begin comparing each of the brands. The least expensive battery we'll be testing is this EverStart sold by Walmart, costing only $190. $19.76. Group size 27 and 810 cold cranking amps. Includes a five year warranty or a three year free replacement. The Walmart EverStart battery is made by Johnson Controls. 810 cold cranking amps and 1000 cranking amps at 32 degrees Fahrenheit. The first test compares the cranking amps of each battery at 75 degrees Fahrenheit. So we'll select CA on the meter for cranking amps. In order to get cold cranking amps, the batteries have to be at zero degrees Fahrenheit to get an accurate reading. The Walmart EverStart is off to a pretty good start at 12.88 volts and 1,115 cranking amps. In case you're not familiar with internal resistance, it's basically a measure at how efficient a battery is at delivering high current on demand. For a new car battery, anything under five is great. The internal resistance is only 3.48 milliamps, which is actually pretty good. Costing $40 more than the Walmart battery is this Duralast Gold, which costs $159.99. Johnson Controls makes both the EverStart Max as well as the Duralast Gold. Just like the EverStart, this one is rated for 810 cold cranking amps. However, the Walmart battery is rated for a thousand cranking amps and this one's only rated for 930. Interstate battery is also made by Johnson Controls and it is exactly the same. Everything on the EverStart in the Duralast batteries looks identical except for the stickers on the outside. I was hoping the Duralast would perform just as good as the EverStart since I paid $40 more for it compared to the EverStart but it didn't. It only produced 12.8 volts and 1,022 cranking amps with an internal resistance of 3.84. The EverStart's internal resistance was better at 3.48. Costing $139.99 is this SuperStart Premium battery, which is sold at O'Reilly. East Penn Manufacturing makes this battery. Group size 27, 840 cold cranking amps. While it's not listed on the battery, it also provides 1,035 cranking amps. The O'Reilly Superstart battery produced 1,133 cranking amps and 12.78 volts. It had an internal resistance of 3.42 milliohms, which is slightly better than both the Walmart and the AutoZone batteries. Costing $139.99 is this AutoCraft Silver, which is sold at Advanced Auto Parts. This battery is is also made by Johnson Controls. The Autocraft Silver comes with a two year full replacement warranty. Instead of going with a third battery made by Johnson Controls group size 27, I went with the group size 3478 in order to compare this against the Optima battery as well as the Die Hard, which are both AGMs. I wasn't able to find the AGM batteries configured in group size 27. The Autocraft Silver is rated for 1,000 cranking amps and 800 cold cranking amps. The Autocraft battery from AutoZone and made by Johnson Controls produced 12.78 volts and 1,083 cranking amps. It had an internal resistance of 3.6, which is good, but not as good as the O'Reilly Superstart battery. The most expensive battery we'll be testing is this Optima Red Top, costing $224.99. It is rated for 1,000 cranking amps and 800 cold cranking amps, and this is group size 3478. The Optimal battery is made by Johnson Controls. It comes with a three-year free replacement warranty. Unlike the other batteries we'll be testing, this is an AGM or an absorbed glass mat battery. The Optima produced 12.84 volts and 1,125 cranking amps. Now AGM batteries are supposed to have lower internal resistance than flooded lead acid batteries, so let's see if this is true. So the internal resistance is only 2.76 milliohms. Very impressive. Just like the Optima, this Die Hard Advanced Gold battery is also an AGM battery. Die Hard is a Sears name brand, however, this battery is made by Intersys. 
Enesis also makes the Odyssey brand AGM battery. It includes a three year free replacement warranty. Let's see if the Die Hard can beat the Optima. The Die Hard produced 13.04 volts and 1,148 cranking amps. Just like the Optima, this too is an AGM battery and actually did slightly better than the Optima with an internal resistance of only 2.69 milliohms. We're gonna use the car battery as well as the inverter to power up this light for 30 minutes to see how each battery performs. I'll be keeping an eye on energy consumption looking at this kilowatt device. Also, this power inverter provides us with some great information regarding the voltage being produced by the battery. This next test is placing somewhere between 42 and 44 amps of load on each battery for 30 minutes, which is a pretty tough test and will give us a great idea on how well these batteries can handle a long, heavy drain. Fortunately, all of the batteries survived the test just fine and the low voltage alarm on the power inverter wasn't needed this time. Car batteries have six cells and each cell is at 2.1 volts at full charge. A car battery is considered fully charged when it has a voltage above 12.6. At 12.4 volts, it's not fully charged, but it's still considered charged. Below 12.4 volts, the battery needs to be recharged. Let's see what that long battery drain did to the batteries. I've allowed the batteries to sit overnight, so let's go ahead and compare their performance. The O'Reilly Superstart is at 12.47 volts and 1,044 cranking amps. It actually did pretty good and still has a strong enough charge to start a car. The Everstart is at 12.59 and 999. Over 12.6 volts is considered fully charged, so this battery actually did great. The Duralast is at 12.53 and 919 and didn't do quite as well as the Walmart Everstart battery. The Autocraft is at 12.34 and 920, so it's below 12.4 volts and definitely needs to be charged. So it didn't do quite as well as the first three batteries. The Optima is only at 12.26 volts and 964 amps. This battery definitely needs to be charged. The Die Hard started off a little bit higher than the others at 13.1 volts and dropped to 12.49 volts and 1,032 cranking amps. Do some batteries actually charge faster than others? What we're gonna do is put a battery charger on each one of these batteries one at a time for one hour using the 10 amp setting. With a lower internal resistance than the flooded lead acid, will the AGM batteries also charge at a faster rate? Let's see how much a voltage increase each battery experiences in just one hour at 10 amps of charge. The O'Reilly Superstart started off at 12.47 volts and is up to 12.78, which is a 0.31 volt increase. The Everstart started off closer to fully charged at 12.59 and increased to 12.83, a 0.24 increase. The Duralast started off at 12.53 and increased to 12.81, an increase of 0.28 volts. The Autocraft started off at 12.34 and increased to 12.72 volts, an increase of 0.38 volts. The Optima started off at 12.26 and increased to 12.72 and an increase of 0.46 volts. The Die Hard started off at 12.49 and increased to 13.01, which is a 0.52 increase, the most of all the batteries we tested. So both the Optima and the Die Hard, which were absorbed glass mat batteries, did charge faster than the flooded lead acid batteries. Even though the Everstart didn't experience as much of a voltage increase, it also started off at a much higher voltage than some of the other brands and ended up at a higher voltage than most. Before doing a cold cranking amp test, I'm going to go ahead and top off each one of these batteries using a trickle charger. Now this trickle charger is designed for both flooded lead acid as well as AGM batteries. All of our batteries have been topped off using the same style of trickle charger baseline numbers before putting these batteries in a freezer and then we'll come back and see how they perform once they are right at zero degrees Fahrenheit. This next test will be placing each one of these batteries inside this freezer and leave them in there for 24 hours and then we'll be testing the cold cranking amps to see just how good each one of the batteries performs. The temperature inside the freezer is minus 14 degrees Celsius, which is very close to zero degrees Fahrenheit, so let's go ahead and begin the testing. The Superstart is rated for 840 cold cranking amps and only produced 745. The Everstart is rated for 810 and only delivered 766, which is still much better than the Superstart. The Duralast is also rated for 810 cold cranking amps and only produced 753. The Autocraft is rated for 800 and only produced 725. The Optima is rated for 800 and produced 751. That's the second best compared to the Everstart. The Die Hard is rated for 775 and only produced 697. So if you don't take into consideration the cold cranking amp ratings and only look at which batteries produce the most cold cranking amps, the least expensive battery, the Walmart Everstart, won the cold cranking amp contest. Another way to look at it is how many cold cranking amps each battery delivered below their cold cranking amp rating. So looking at it this way, once again, the least expensive battery, the Walmart Everstart, 
Shark 1. However, the most expensive battery, the Optima, wasn't too far behind. We're gonna place these batteries back in the freezer now and we'll come back in 24 hours to see how they perform at 20 below zero. The freezer's at minus 27 degrees Celsius, which is very close to minus 20 degrees Fahrenheit, so let's go ahead and get the testing underway. The Superstart delivered 683 cold cranking amps and the internal resistance was at 4.6. The Everlast produced 708 cold cranking amps and the internal resistance was 4.45, which is better than what the Superstart achieved. The Duralast was also at 708 cold cranking amps and just like the Everstart was at 4.45 for the internal resistance. The Autocraft only produced 651 cold cranking amps and the internal resistance was at 4.82 milliohms. The Optima was only at 629 cold cranking amps, but it had the best internal resistance at 4.16. The Tie Hard really struggled at 580 cold cranking amps with an internal resistance of 4.5 milliohms. This time around, the Everstart as well as the Duralast both tied for the first spot at 708 cold cranking amps. The Superstart wasn't too far behind at 683. Another way to look at it is how many cold cranking amps each battery delivered below their cold cranking amp rating. Once again, the least expensive Walmart Everstart as well as the Duralast in this case, both tied for the top spot. While this was a really tough test, I really thought the AGM batteries would do a little bit better. So which battery should you buy for your vehicle? If your vehicle uses a flooded lead acid battery like the first four batteries we tested, I would continue using a flooded lead acid battery and would buy either a Costco Interstate battery or the Walmart Everstart if their prices are the least expensive. After all, why pay the extra 40 to $60 for a battery that's made by the exact same company and just sold at a different place? While we didn't test that the Napa's battery is also made by East Penn Manufacturing but costs more money and has a lower cold cranking amp rating. So the O'Reilly Superstart battery seems like a better option than the Napa battery. If your car has a factory equipped absorbed glass mat battery, you'll probably want to continue using one. They handle vibration better, don't require any maintenance, handle deep discharges better, but they are going to cost quite a bit more. If you live in an area that doesn't get below freezing, I really like the performance of the Die Hard better than the Optima. However, if you live in an area that does get below freezing, the Optima definitely seems like a better option. I really like it when I find opportunities to save money, and in this case, it proved once again you don't have to pay more to get more. In fact, you could pay less and get more when you buy a product such as the Walmart Everstart, which is made by Johnson Controls. As it turns out, Johnson Controls makes well over half the batteries manufactured in the United States. Now, just as a reminder, I buy all the products tested on this channel and I say no to every single sponsorship opportunity. All the videos on this channel are viewer recommended, including this one. So if you have a video idea, please let me know and there's a good chance I'll put together a video on it. As usual, thanks so much for watching the video. Please take care and I look forward to next time.